Next, we're going to do a story roundup at the end of the show, basically covering all the things that have made my blood boil this week. And joining us to tap through everything is Becca Hudson, head of the news movement. Becca, thank you for joining us on the show. Right, we're going to start. I think we're going to try and bring everyone in. Still with me are Stella and Reem. I think we'll all magically appear on the screen in a moment in a sort of very confusing configuration. Uh, let's start. There we go. Hey, we're all there. Look up, Stella. <laughs> right, OK, Stella's in the room. Let's start with, uh, starting with you, Becca, if we may. I, I will try and keep control of this. It looks like University Challenge. Um, starting here, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak, shock oh shock Politicians want us to think they really, really, really do like football. <laughs> but they've got a point, haven't they? What is this nonsense of this abomination of a cross of St George on the England shirt? I mean, do they have a point? And would we call it an abomination? You know... I don't think that Nike have sort of undermined English identity whatsoever by simply upgrading or updating a little design. Okay. They've described it as playful. I think it's exactly that. Um, you know, it even references the shirt that um, our team were wearing in 1966, right. which Becca, even I know was the last time we won I would have the World to stop Cup. You there. I would have to stop you there. This is an England football shirt, OK? It is for the team of our nation, the, the, the lionesses, the men's, the women's, the, the youth team. How can it be an England football shirt if you update the English flag? That is a symbol of being English. It is not an England football shirt if it doesn't have the England flag on. You can't update your flag. You, but being English is so much more than a red cross, isn't it? We all know what it means. And I think we are some of the most phenomenal football fans in the world, regardless of, the, of whether you're supporting our lionesses, our lions or our, um, or our younger teams. And I think, it, I think it's really fun. I think it's just a little aesthetic nod. I think we've all got far more things to be worrying about. And I don't think this represents an attack on identity whatsoever. And I, I think the fact that we, you know, it, we can update... Um, and represent Englishness in different ways, I think is inclusive and fun. And I, I okay. can't believe okay. that Rishi Sunak really? and Keith Starmer have put this, the time in their day to worry about it. Is this reasonable updating, Reem? I completely disagree, Becca. And I've got to say, I think that we need to have good taste in this country. It is the England flag. I'm very proud of the England flag. And I think that we need to have the England flag on the English football team's uh, shirts. And I think it's ridiculous to say otherwise. Now, I think that Becca makes a good point that it is definitely a political move. There is, a, there is an element between Starmer and Sunak weighing in, trying to seem cool, trying to seem as though they have a cool and trendy opinion. But you, you, know, you, you called this, uh, you know, sort of inclusive. How is it inclusive? It's just a really rubbish it's cross. It's meaningless. And, and Stella, you know a little bit about flags because, of course, you uh, worked for uh, Lady Nuge. Uh, when she, uh, when, when she, uh, the, I can't remember her real name. What's her real name? I, I would, I don't Miss know who you're talking about. Emily Thornbury, when she had to resign from no. the front bench because she was rude about an England flag. That, that like shows how important ago, these symbols... 20 years ago. Uh, my, 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 issue with, my issue with the flag, my issue with the flag is, and I do agree with Reem, the British people do eventually need to, you know, develop a good sense of taste because, you know, uh, I think that, 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 that maybe that's what Brexit was all about. Anyway... <laughs> I think it's a my, my issue with the flag is that it's a corporate decision. It's not really what any color. What color is the great flag? Uh, uh, white and white and blue. So how would you feel if someone replaced no, no, that? No, no, I rainbow? would like I would like to keep it that way. I think it's the wrong decision. Well, exactly. So I your flag, a, you I want think, to keep the same, right? For you uh, as well. I think it's the commodification look, of this, weirdness. This discussion is, is this discussion is flagging already. We are going to move on to yay. Four hundred and fifty grand of your taxpayers' cash has been spaffed up the wall on the Hastings Queer History Collective, so they can tell us that pheasants are queer. Uh, Becca, are pheasants queer? I think this is... Um, I really like this story because I think it's, it's a really important way of challenging the idea that queerness or homosexuality is not a naturally occurring thing and that whether you're a human, a pheasant or whatever else on this planet, um, that, that, that there is a spectrum of sexuality so, well, identity and that includes, uh, you know, game birds like okay. pheasants. So okay. I think, you know... Well, back let, let me just, really... uh, because not everyone will have read the story, sorry. So let me say, this is the idea that after they have finished laying, a hen pheasant can, and so often does apparently, not something I know about, change her plumage to represent a cock pheasant. And the, the, the hen pheasant is brown, the cock pheasant is those wonderful colours we've seen on the screen. Um, 
as, as people get old, their appearances change. So um, my hair's fallen out, and in fact, if I let it go grow, uh, it will be grey. Does that mean I'm queer because my appearance has changed because I'm ageing? That's basically what pheasants do. No, it's not, it's not that. It's because the female the female pheasant's ovaries shrivel and disappear, so they do effectively transition. And I think really oh, we're using oh, pheasants like, here. Like, like, men, like the menopause. Well, women, but, but you're still a woman, aren't you? Because you still, you still keep other pheasant, organs. The hen pheasant is still a woman. So are women transition yeah, when they go through the menopause? Should they be labelled queer? No, they're not transitioning no, into men, are they? No. That's a stage of being female. Whereas pheasants, they lose oh. their female sex organs and become men. So Fine. I think okay, they, no, they don't. Get they don't you are wrong. They do not get a female sex organ. You got Stella. me there, Jake, because when you first Ooh. read me the headline of the story, I thought, ah, another another woke story. They are making a bad name name out anyway, of the left. The real head. disgrace. And then I read the actual story, and Becca is actually quite right. I think it's quite important for young people to be aware that you know no, what? being no, gay is something sorry. that can be found. I can't. Right. To okay, this any longer. Not... This is just not true. Right, okay. We can't this talk is... over we can't talk over each other because no one will be able to hear us at home. Right, final great use of taxpayers' money. The VNA Museum in London. 67 million quid. If you're listening at work to this, that's your tax. 67 million quid went to the Victorian Albert Museum in London. And they put on a display uh ream where they labelled Margaret Thatcher as uh, as a hate figure, as a villain next to, alongside, contemporary villain, alongside Adolf Hitler and Osama bin, bin Laden. Is that a good use of taxpayers' Absolutely cash? Absolutely disgusting and disgraceful. And I cannot believe, firstly, that taxpayer money has been spent on it altogether, but also this question that Margaret Thatcher is in some way anywhere near as bad. And I think Margaret Thatcher is a pretty brilliant prime minister, one of the best that we've had in this country altogether, after William Gladstone, of course. But to put her next to Adolf Hitler, who grudgingly murdered millions and millions of people, and to put him to put Margaret Thatcher next to Osama bin Laden, who again is a horrendous terrorist. To put her next to those two people is disgusting. That's not so the point they right. were trying to make. They weren't comparing them. They were just saying that in the in the imagination of the British public, they are both villains. That's what they were saying. Not Which in my mind. True. Where's the lie? Thatcher, for most British people, is a most, villain. Most British no, people, she actually won, won elections. She actually I won majorities. Most see. British people, I know the left, they weren't making like to say, oh, she's some comment. pantomime. She actually won elections. They were making a comment. Becca, true. come on, we don't want to leave you out at home. Margaret Thatcher, no, contemporary I'm, I'm villain. No, absolutely, I'm absolutely telling She absolutely, to the vast majority of people, she is a villain and she's divisive, as this call, you know, as this conversation d demonstrates. And, you know, it's a great opportunity to have the conversation about Thatcher's legacy, which left thousands and thousands of coalfield communities decimated after their contribution to the wealth of this economy. You know, she is a modern day villain. No, and, so, um, and I'm very pleased that DNA had the guts to Rhea, say come it. On, we'll give Sorry. you the last word. Sorry. Okay, so there's this entire idea that Margaret Thatcher is this villain because she stopped wasting taxpayers money into coal fields that were not making any money, effectively wasting money down the toilet. She said, hold on a minute, let's stop doing that. I think she was right to close down those uh, coal fields. And I actually think that Margaret Thatcher herself did some incredible policy work that means that we all benefit today. But politically, you can still like Margaret Thatcher and yet recognise that for the public imagination, globally and nationally, Margaret Thatcher is seen as That's a not negative true. Right, OK, OK. Iron lady, okay. dominant That's negative all. Thing. Come on, Stella. That's all we've got time for today.